welcome back to Life and Style <laughs> Relationship <laughs> Wednesday. Right here on your favorite TV session, uh, KTN. Well, you know, all these guys are talking over here, so they're getting my mind off it. But then we're talking about drugs and alcohol and their effect on relationships. You know, it's easy. I think it's easy sometimes for us to think that the only things that can affect a relationship are things like, you know, cheating, um, external factors. But what do you do when the problem lives with you? in the house right there and it is something that you know the other person is battling with struggling with it's something like alcohol you cannot say you know you're going out with another man you're going out with another woman uh you can't really you, you can go into a bar pick the bottle and smash it <laughs> it's not like when somebody's relating with somebody else you can go to the other person and say stop relating with my husband or my spouse and there are people who are battling with that they're dealing with it some of them it is cost of them money time some children are growing up you know without their parents over there and 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 you know uh that's why we have places like now right here we are uh, coming to you from the michael joseph center it's a good place where you know young people growing up bringing in and exerting their energies here through art uh, poetry music uh, plays kids whatever you need to do and yet it is being given out for free you just need to make a, a proposal and you could get it for free and come in as a group as individuals uh, get in your crowd coming in over here and get your energy towards positive stuff so that you don't need to battle with some of these things that we are talking about which are affecting some families breaking some families breaking hearts too not just the families breaking hearts too because you can imagine uh, children who've got to carry probably their father or their mother you know you carrying your mother from the bar coming with her home the effect of that you know and, and you're growing up that, that's that's really crazy right crazy crazy yeah. crazy but like i was saying again it is always when you put some positive energy through it you are going to to make it because when you're dealing with someone who, who is undergoing uh, challenges with drugs you do not confront them confrontation is one of the things they run away from forever and ever if you confront them you're not their friend Gerald uh, I'll, I'll just I'll just bring this to you because I have remembered something and I don't want to forget it I recently saw a video it was shared by some of my friends who were in South Africa I saw a video of a little boy slapping the mother literally like two three times yes, and you saw it and because the mother in initially I was thinking what kind of culture is this then I realized the mother was high yeah. and the boy was trying to talk to the mother I think he was about 10 or something he's trying to talk to the mother and he's frustrated so he slapped the mother so hard and trying to talk to the mother and saying talk to me and the mother is not talking back how do you play somebody like that like because when we're talking about when you talk about things like okay no confrontation it's easier for me as an adult how can we control the reaction of a child like that who has come to the place where it, you know I, I don't think i don't think that child was just one uh one unruly child i think it's a frustration that he carried in him and he really wants his mother back and his mother is away so how, how do you deal with those kind of cases whenever someone gets high they are always ready to leave the moment that's one one uh, characteristics of getting high you want to leave the moment you don't care you don't care about what is happening or who is talking who is telling me what i'm just leaving the moment i've forgotten everything that is attached to me so that in in such cases even if you you put so hard to deal with this person you're just wasting your time because you will deal with them you will end up fighting you end up harming them you end up you know doing something like that slapping your mother which is not a very good thing as much as there is frustration but then yes we understand you you're also frustrated more than them so the best thing to do just let the highness go down like she was saying wait for that moment when when you can really bring it up because again you're going to talk to a, a sober person you're looking for a sober person to talk to if you go talking to high people and you're not high it's not going to <laughs> to, to blend but you're looking for a sober person look for those moments when those people are sober bring it up in a very uh, systematic way one thing i know about when you're 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 a, a, an addict you know how to look for details especially when you're sober you because uh, highness bring enhances sensitivity 
That's why you are able to hear someone talking from a distance even though you know very well you are here. It enhances sensitivity. So you can be able to scoop those small, small details when you are sober. And if you use that moment wisely, you can really get these people out of this when you use a positive approach. I don't know, man. I don't know because you see... <laughs> the times I used to get high, I wasn't sensitive. <laughs> yes. yeah. I was that is why I think when <laughs> the moment you notice that someone is going the drugs way, it's that very it's the right time to you know like handle that and tell them you're not going the right way and as i'll repeat and repeat with love and you know show them you love them and show them you care so that way you will not push them away you know but if you push if you come confronting them they'll even look for you know like uh, you know like they escape it, it is like a way to escape and they'll go to it see so you know uh, while, while, while you're saying that and David, you're a radio host. Sometimes um, you'll be doing shows, you'll be picking calls or something. When you leave radio, what do you want to do immediately? You want to unwind, right? Yes. Because it's like you've been picking up stuff. Yeah. Now you're living with, literally, you're living with a problem, in quotes. Mm -hmm. And I think that as much as um, we're talking about true love, I think that we also put in a burden that some people are not prepared that's true. to bear. That's true. Like they do their best. But again, what I was saying before, that we are progressive in nature, like you want to put an effort into something that is moving. Nobody is going to push a car that won't start. That's true. <laughs> After a while, they will leave it. But if we're pushing the car and it's going downhill like this, people will push and run with it. But you keep on pushing so you feel somebody will ask you is that on free gear mm -hmm. have you started it um have you really started the engine or something because they expect that their effort is going to produce result so talk about somebody who has been doing this like for 15 years even if they're patient don't you think that somewhere they are also being trained absolutely and, and rightfully so right you know rightfully so because uh your energies do get sapped you do get tired you right. do get frustrated you do get broken um and after all that is said and done sometimes you do ask okay is this going to be the permanent situation right um it's a painful moment because those things do happen yeah. relationships break because of those things divorces do happen because of those things um and it's an unfortunate place and of sometimes course people feel neglected right yeah if you have a spouse a wife who she's always high I mean, okay, forget the children. Talk about even the man. Yeah. Sometimes, no intimacy. Yeah. You can't have conversations. Yeah. By the time she comes home, blacks out. Yeah. Or you have a husband who is always drunk, high, something, stressed about something, on drugs. They come home, no affection. Yeah. They don't even remember you were there. They can't talk to you even well. Yeah. They're in uh -huh. their own world. They come and slump on the chair, wake up in the morning, go to work. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the effects are more. Please. Um, I think now this is where you bring in, um, bring in uh, the brothers, <laughs> the big brothers. <laughs> you bring in the big there. brothers. I am very positive about this, by the way, because <laughs> I believe that it is not it is not a permanent situation unless now in yes kabisa. But honestly, if if you have the right energy and the right surrounding and everything is just positive, trust me, it's going to happen. So I mean you bring in the brothers, now bring in the big sisters. What if it bring drunk, in the close the brothers friends. Also also drunk drunk oh my god, no you bring in the what, the what are they called? The bring in the pastor now. <laughs> <laughs> or even bring in now even Because what, what I'm trying to do these uh, counselors. Uh, what I, what I'm trying to do today is that you know, we may be that voice to those people who can't listen to their spouses. Yeah. They're not listening to their children. And, and we may be that voice to them today that is letting them know, look, whatever you're doing, well, you have your own choices, but these are the consequences. Yeah. This is how it is affecting the people yeah. around you. Yeah. You know, um, you're draining your spouse, you're breaking your children, yeah. looking up to you for affirmation every day, coming yeah. back to a father who is completely lost in his own world. Yeah. This child wants to hear the father say something. And the father will never say it. You know, Gerald was talking about you wait for them when they are sober. And the reason I doubted you is because I had a drunkard father who would be quiet when he would be sober 
and only yeah. talk when he was drunk and I know the effect that that had because yeah. now you do not know whether you can take these words serious exactly yeah. you know when he's sober he wakes up in the morning he's sober and then he's quiet you try to have conversations he shuts down then when he comes back later in the evening he's drunk that's when he's talking and about that time you can't have a conversation and it's very frustrating it's very very frustrating because uh, you don't know whether now at the point when they're high you don't know whether they even mean <laughs> what they yeah. say yeah. yeah that is what we call addiction exactly when you're when you're when you're not on drugs you're not yourself but when you get the drugs now you become a lively human being right so addiction does that way to people these things do heal and help people right. so i'm open so you agree with me that if a family shows love to that person no matter what mm. kind, change. Ki kindness does yes. change people yes yes kindness yes. does change it, it's not that it always will mm. because That's again w if we're to be very practical it is not every situation where somebody has shown kindness and hope and love that everything has yeah. ended well. That's right. But we'd say 95%. Even uh, we, we wouldn't, we wouldn't if do that. If <laughs> if it's because because, because there are some people, again, when you bring that love, they now think, ah, you they're want not to worthy of it. Supporting me. Me. Well, they sometimes they think me, they're, yeah. they're not worthy yeah. of it. In yes. Yes. yes, that's the thing. Yeah. It worsens the situation. Yes. Because they think, why are you even yeah. showing me that's, that? That's why it's key to reaffirm to them <laughs> their own value. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They, they feel worse. You know, I always said this, that a lot of men who live their families, they don't leave because they, ca they don't love their families. They leave their families because they can't face their families. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you treat somebody so well and then they look at themselves and they feel, yeah. why are you so good and I'm like this? So they keep on feeling like, look, I'm not good enough. And they run. So some do not run physically. Yes. They run even further yeah. to run away from that reality so that when they come, they're drunk, so they don't see your perfection, yeah. in, in quotes, because they can't handle it. Yeah. It reminds them of their dysfunction, yeah. their weakness, their incapacitation in dealing with that thing. So again, as David is saying, I think it's, it's an individual by individual yeah. case. Not everybody will respond the same way. Yeah. Yet again, um, Gerald, we must also <laughs> salvage the people who live with these people. Yeah. Uh, how, how do we help the children? How do we help the spouses? How do we help the fiancés? How do we help even the broader family? Like David, you know, talking about the dad is shedding tears. Yeah. How do we help those other people who are there? Um, because not all of them, again, can show love for 10, mm -hmm. 15 years. Yeah, true, true. true, you're right. One thing I wanted actually to say when you were talking, I was about to say, leave children out of this. Children are not part of alcohol, right? You, you Children... Um, but they are, they are affected, they are affected, affected yes, actually, yeah. but do not do not involve them with an, with someone who is suffering from this because once you involve them they get actually to know even more and see more frustrations that will end up even hurting them more and then they look at it you know children have more years to live like than, than the grown-ups <laughs> because they think now they are living forever and once they see this they think it's a permanent situation that will never change so the good thing when you're dealing with someone who who is um undergoing such a problem or maybe an addiction it's very important first of all to leave children out of it so that children don't become part of this progressiveness of how we do are going. you do you send them away or what no what you if don't they are send them away but put them in a safe place whereby they are not actually hearing your your quarrels in the house they are not seeing the misbehaviors of them but do, uh, do, do, do you know why i disagree to an extent yes. it's because there is no you might have a safe place physically yes. but mentally there's no safe space do you know yes. why yes because you're being put in a room but in your mind you know i can't talk to dad i can't talk to mom right. Right. that's not right. safe yes. emotionally it's not safe yes. yeah. you know you're not in a safe space at all so what you're doing you're trying to make sure that children are away from this you may not manage it to completely uh, we are talking about those people who are not the alcoholics mm. the people are the, the husband that the wife goes out now you don't sit down with your children in the evening and say your mother is a problem your mother is a is, a, is you know this and this you just but, but first then, of all Gerald, let children first of all okay uh, uh, allow me to ask this because yes. you still go ahead and yes. answer it yes so uh, their mother has left on friday night yes she's not back home yes. the whole weekend they're asking questions and that is what now david is saying you see mentally how are they going to deal with this? You're not, you don't want to tell them that their mother is bad. But they're asking, where is mommy? <laughs> My sons, if I go home 
now and my wife is not in they'll ask me dad where's mommy if she's there and i am away for a night and i've traveled they will ask where did daddy go it's just general when i'm there they may not even bother they'll go out hang out with their friends or something but when i'm away they will ask where did i go yes. if i am home at about six or seven then i want to go out they'll come to me and say dad where are you going that's children mm. they may not even think twice about what they're saying but they'll just say dad where are you going you know because they feel safe yeah. having me over there yes. there are times when because of uh, my ministry engagements they'll feel like so i'll say i'm going for a church conference or that again you know they they feel like you're going out too much so if if you're trying to protect those children but their mother is absent how are you handling the situation or there are those ones that when they come in it's noisy you know they come in they are hooting they're singing they're doing whatever. so you're trying to keep these kids and then the kids you have see, to wake you up see, you see there are things that you cannot control wow. right. and there are those things that you can control control what you can and leave the rest that yeah, you true. can't mm -hmm. to God because okay. God also will help you through and that is why we, we have prayers and all that and it yeah. doesn't, you know and once in a while it is very important right. you just let your children know that this is not their problem and this is not their effect it yeah. is something that is with one person and it doesn't mean this is the value of our family so that when this someone misbehaves it does not make them feel the low self-esteem that you are painting a bad yeah, image of going our back family to the very same point yes. you've actually uh, re-addressed yes. what you're talking about yes because in that case you've not left the children out of it yeah. you but you have included them to know very well that they are not the problem. they are not the problem now you see when you tell the children that first of all you're giving them peace first to, to settle and know that we are dealing with one person. Now when you're dealing with this person, please do not involve children. You're making the children actually become now the, the thing that the father is avoiding. Because he comes home, wako happy what you know, he's high already. He's, he thinks that this is the problem of my life. And you see, when someone is undergoing an addiction, they always look for something that they can attach their problems to. Even when it's you you're the good one, you're the love, you're showing love, but then they think you they want to attach their their um their disappointments to you. So they want to say, Come as you your mama money and I should go blood let me ask you let me ask you because we don't have all the time but let me ask you um, in the case where it is the man who drinks and the man goes out a lot uh, a lady most women naturally they want to offload their issues she feels like she needs to talk when a woman is going through trouble when a woman is excited she will talk when she's going through trouble, <laughs> she feels it's a need. You know, she feels it's a need. Uh, otherwise, she's going to blow up. Yeah. She needs to offload. How is she supposed to handle this? Because again, you can't tell her to just completely keep quiet. Who should she talk to? She has family. Uh -huh. She has moms. Kwanza, if you if, if you are uh, a wife, I'll, I'd say if you if you're a wife, your mom is the closest. Um, you have aunties. You have people who've gone to, who have the same you know like they have husbands who have uh, who are alcoholics and you you find you can talk to them you can also seek um, help in you know engage a lot in uh, church activities and make sure you're always very very busy in such a way that so that when you get home or rather when you, you you're not occupied with oh my god my husband is an addict and this is going to depress you but you see if you find you 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 taking part in uh, you're very active in chat stuff and you're very busy at least when you get home you see best part of the day you've been busy and you haven't thought about my husband he's a drunkard do today he's going to come home drunk and also if it comes to a time when now it's now just too much now look for a counselor right. they really help I have a different answer um, me I usually say uh, when you want to know what is uh, how that uh, shoe is pressing the person where the shoe I mean if you want to know the problem just join if you can't beat them, join so them. So I join them to drink. Go, go, with, go with them out. 
for once i mean you won't die for going out you see again so go, go out and drink just one <laughs> and i will say something very nice go drink I, I don't want to because it might be cocaine or heroin does that mean you also go, go with him it? don't mm. take the heroin but you just giving him, him company yeah keep him company uh-huh. then you will get to know what's the problem is it the friend is it him I is it or you am i the problem, problem by, by just going into you that won't know the problem because but you will have played a part in first of all in your mind your mind as a person you know now we are helping the people who are not uh, affected yeah. and you see when you you have the answers in your mind it's not the same as when you're trying to guess the answers because guessing the answers will keep you actually going down and down and down but if you have the right answers in your hands then you know where to approach it from so it's very important when you find that ah so he is going out eh ah i will go with him or rather i will go another place so that he becomes insecure remember also men are so insecure so if you create an insecurity in men me i know that one, that one has worked i know it's not the best way to use but it has worked before whereby the man realizes ah my wife is also going out with a friend oh and so and and by the way she's changing even her style her way of dress I think I think she's just she's just getting another man and then well, you know what the insecurity uh, will make them I, I, I'm going to wind it up like this because <laughs> all those stuff yes. um you know you can you can do that and then it still backfires That's true yeah you can do that and then it backfires but I will I will ask you know if you are out over there and you are dealing with issues your spouse your child your parent you're dealing with issues of drugs or alcohol you got to treat that person as somebody who is unwell you know you got to treat them like they're not well there's something within them that has overpowered them and so the same way you would seek medical treatment for somebody who's unwell i think that you need to seek treatment for them find somebody you can talk to like david has told you you know and i'm going to ask him again to just repeat that very quickly uh, you can find me on twitter as david uk Facebook, Instagram, David or UK, Black Skills, Skills with a Z. You can find me on those platforms, shoot me a message and we can talk. Yeah, so you want to come out of uh, drugs and, and alcohol and all that. It's affecting your family, people who love you, your children, your spouse, your relationships, your effectiveness at work, your productivity, your intimacy, your affection, your finances. You want to get out of it, get somebody to help you to get out over there. Don't make excuses for it, but sometimes you're not strong enough to get out by yourself. Well, that's all the time we have had today on Talk to Pastor Chris, this Relationship Wednesday on Life and Style. My Style Story is coming up next. Keep it right here. <laughs>